So, uh, Farnell UK kindly sent me over a, a couple of free um, extrinsic sensor boards um, just to take a look at, really, and have a play with. Sent me a couple of them. Uh, it's like a, a sensor board, a tiny little board which fits on top of a development board which uh, is by Freescale. So, let's have a look. Struggling to open the bag, actually. God, it's pretty tough. That'll do it. There. Here we are. Extrinsic sensors evaluation kit. Evaluation kit for extrinsic sensors from Element 14 and uh, Farnell UK are distributing these. I think they're about £18 each, which is fairly competitive with, you know, when put against other development boards. So we've got the uh, Quick start guide. Obviously, an online manual. And here's a pretty little board. I like the board. Nice uh, rounded edges. I think I'm getting a bit closer. And uh, get some more light on it. Okay, so it's a pretty nice board. It's got rounded off edges there. Um, this is the development board and this is the little sen extrinsic sensor board on top. It's an Arduino form factor so I've actually bought some additional jumpers to fit onto here so that it's truly got all the Arduino form factor pins. We've got a, uh, a, a capacitive touch sensor there and that's a multicolor LED um, I'll just go over, briefly go over some of the features of the board and why I think it seems like a pretty decent bit of kit for the money when you compare to Arduinos and uh, other development boards. So the, the board itself is the FRDM KL25Z development board. It has an ARM Cortex M0 32 bit microcontroller so it's pretty decent 32-bit uh, uh, 66 IOs GPIOs it runs at 48 megahertz um, it, ha it supports USB mass storage and USB on the go has 128k of flash um, the capacitive touch support in the chip and also they put it onto the development board which is handy um, the way you can just literally plug this in via USB to your computer it loads up a USB drive and you literally drag and drop your source files onto the USB and it flashes itself uh, which I'm yet to see how well that works but it, it sounds pretty handy uh, the whole board is only about 18 pounds as I said that doesn't include oh no, actually that does include the top, the top so that's, that's 18 pounds together um, the development board has a built-in accelerometer um, USB controller and as I said multi-color LED touch sensor and the amazing thing which this is why I'm really interested in this um, coincidentally is the price of the chip uh, is a really important fact for me um, for example the 32-bit Arduino I think it's Due or Due or however you pronounce it has it has a more uh, a more powerful slightly more powerful processor um, you know it's about 80 megahertz I guess it's quite a lot more powerful but 
Um, it's you're talking ten quid for a chip there. If you're going to build something, a prototype, and actually make something, ten pound for an MCU is a lot of money. Um, now, equivalently, that you can get something like a, a chip kit Pi, which is a development board that fits onto the Raspberry Pi as a 32-bit PIC MCU. The specs are not as good as this um, for that MCU, but it's the price is the same. So this this chip is only three pounds, which I think is a bargain. So if you prototype with this, you've got a, a cheap MCU which can do a lot, which will bring your bit of material price down. Um, now the extrinsic sensor board has got a high precision pressure sensor uh, which is stated 50 to 110 kPa at 2.5 volts um, it has a low power 3D magnet magnet <laughs> magnetometer <laughs> magnetometer and a 3 axis digital accelerometer so with all these together you've got quite a lot of sensing capability and obviously with 66 IOs and all the other capabilities of the MCU I think this is potentially an excellent package. It's got two USB sockets there, uh, one op open SDA socket and I don't know that might be USB on the go. So I will try and rig the rest of this up and uh, try out open SDA. Also I've read that this board is now supported by Embed, which is a cloud-based ARM development service. I'm not always keen on cloud services myself, so I'm yet to try it. Apparently it is good, so I'll be giving that a go as well. And hopefully be able to get some working examples with this. I would like to be able to prototype products with this because the chip is so cheap. Cheap as chips. So uh, yeah, we'll see how we get on. So here's here's the extrinsic board. Here here's the uh, headers I soldered on. There's a Bluetooth module. I also decided they this, they've put the um, terminals for a battery holder on the board, which is really handy. So I made shift a uh, CR2032 button cell battery casing. So I can actually run this off battery. I've got it on USB at the moment because this Bluetooth module is quite thirsty and it, it, the battery won't run it, the button cell. But I can actually run this on battery, which is really good that they included that in the design for the board. I think that's brilliant. Um, anyway, so here is a sketch running on my PC via processing. Um, someone else had shared that code, which is really handy. And what I've got it to do is when I bring a magnet close to the magnetometer, if that I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but you know that's how I'm saying it. <laughs> that you'll see, you'll see the effect on the screen. So if I try and get the camera back enough, get this. So that's pretty cool. I mean, you could. So I, I could get the data from any of these sensors to do this. Um, it's very simple. You've you got some code that's literally chucking out a value from a sensor straight over serial, which is being converted via Bluetooth, being received by a Bluetooth USB module on the PC, which is then going into the COM port, being read by the processing code, which is then mapping that data on the screen. Now I haven't spent much time working out how this visual code works yet. It's the first time I've used processing but I think this is really quite cool. Um, so there'll be links to the pages where I got the example code for both the board and what's running on the screen. Um, but yeah, I, I think, and that took, that took no time to do. I mean it was so easy, it was at least as easy to use embed and then dragging and dropping as it is to use an Arduino so you know there's there's a good community out there so I think it's pretty decent and uh, yeah so I mean I, I've also 
there's RTOS is you can run the embed RTOS on here which is a, a real time operating system which is really good for multitasking I haven't used an RTOS yet but um, I'm looking at giving it a shot but really you only want to use an RTOS if, if you've got an application that's worthwhile using an RTOS so whether or not I will you do that right now I'm not sure but so so far I'm very pleased with this um, you can either download the processor expert and code warrior and do things in a fully fledged you know more involving manner or if you just want quick access to working code where all the libraries and all the tool chains are sorted for you similar to when you're using an Arduino then you can use the embed platform with this which is great so I give it a thumbs up I think it's great thank you